first story is titled, Am I the a-hole for not trying to reunite my daughters? I have two daughters, Kay, 26, and Layla, 22. As a single mom, I tried my best for both of them. But Layla, while I love her, makes it very hard to do so at times. She's always been attention-seeking, stubborn, and jealous. We did family therapy and individual therapy for years after her dad passed away when she was 9, but something snapped in her. Am I the a-hall part? When Kay was 22, Layla 18 at the time, she had a boyfriend, Mick, 20. He seemed nice. Unfortunately, Layla needed all of his attention. It was constant. He'd be over at our house on couch watching a movie, with Kay and Layla had to be right there next to him. When they went out, Layla chucked a fit if they didn't invite her. She messaged him constantly. She even went to his soccer games, skipping work at her job when she hadn't seen him in a while, sending him pictures of herself, crying when I would ask her to get out of Kay's bedroom when they wanted to be alone. I tried to put my foot down when Kay complained. I had a talk with Layla about boundaries and managing jealousy and how maybe we should get back to therapy. She didn't want to listen, and she was cold. She started getting more secretive, and Mick started withdrawing. It was then I walked in on them on the couch when I got home from work. I'll be real, I was not calm. I screamed. The whole neighborhood could probably hear. I banned him from the house. I threw her clothes at her and told her to get to her room. I called Kay and asked her to come home. Mick must have gotten to her before me. She came home a mess. It was one of the worst days of my life after losing my husband, honestly. My daughter was devastated, and it was my other daughter that did it. Once Kay calmed down, she asked me to take her to my mom's house, and I did. When I got back, I went to talk to Layla. She was sobbing, saying I ruined everything, that I hated her, that I was always ruining her life, that they were meant to be together. I held her, despite wanting to scream some sense into her. When the dust settled, we talked. She fought any sort of blame, accusing her sister of abusing Mick, of Kay keeping them apart. As gently as possible, I told her that while Mick is awful, what she did is also terrible. She needed to apologize. She refused. That's not even the half of it, but the relationship has been strained for the past few years. Kay has moved on, and I am close with Kay and his husband, and I'm careful to never talk about Layla and to be respectful of Kay's boundaries. Layla, however, begs for information about Kay, wants me to tell her everything, whines about how it was in the past, how she needs to get over it. I'm kinda, huh? I just told her, what do you expect? You never apologized. What you did was wrong. I love you, but I'm not the one to rebuild this relationship anymore. You're not kids. She didn't like that. And while I feel like I'm respecting Kay's boundaries, even my mom says I need to try harder to reunite them. So, am I the a-hole? Now, for the top comments. Definitely not the a-hole. It's hard to accept that when your children become adults, they have to sort out their own crap. But that's the reality of life. You did everything you could for Layla. You sound like you're a great mother. But you're absolutely right in that you have to allow her to go through the consequences of her own actions. If you try to get involved, you risk your relationship with both of your daughters. Thank you for this. Not the a-hall. Most time, I read these types of stories on Reddit. The mother chooses to take the offending daughter's side, but you did the exact opposite. I applaud you for that. Stick to your guns and ignore your mother. If Layla continues her behavior, I'd suggest just going low contact with her because she's not worth losing your good relationship with Kay. What prompted me to post was reading a similar story to mine where that happened. I can't stand cheating. But I understand my daughter was young. Not young enough to not know any better, though. And I do love Layla. I just can't help feeling I've failed them both. You haven't failed them both. In fact, it appears you actually handled the situation splendidly. I would keep on the path you're on, let them work it out as adults, and if Layla continues to complain that Kay won't speak to her, I would just respond with, Look, Kay gets to create and maintain her own boundaries, and we have to respect that, even if it's not what we want. Not a hall. Layla's in denial. She needs more help than you, even as her mother, can give her. Kudos to you for trying so hard to be there for both of them. Please remember to be kind to yourself too. Thank you for this. Now, for the next story. Am I the a-hall for refusing to take the blame for neglecting my two-year-old niece? I, 20, am the type who prefer to live in my own world most of the times. 
unless working or asked to be social, and usually spend my weekends alone in my room with doors and windows closed, headphone overhead, and either watch drama or play games. I live with my parents and sister, 23, who is single mother, for now that is, complicated, of a two-year-old. I woke up at 1 p.m. on Sunday after binging a series of movies the previous night, cleaned myself, ate something, and went back to my room. At around 4 p.m., my sister stormed into my room and screamed at me. I was confused at first, but then understood that she had left my niece in the house and I was supposed to babysit her. I don't mind babysitting, but I didn't remember her telling me anything about babysitting the previous day. She told me to check my phone, and there it was. A text previous night from her telling me that she would be out next morning and ask me to feed and look after my niece till afternoon. I missed it. I honestly did not know that a baby was in the house and assumed that nobody was home. My niece had been hungry and must have been crying for a very long time, though I did not hear anything, soiled herself and was rather miserable. My sister kept yelling at me till she got into tears, calling me unreliable, useless, waste of space, and some vulgarities, etc., which might be true, but I don't really care. I responded that she should also be ashamed of herself for leaving her baby to someone as unreliable as me, without even bothering to confirm that I have received her message. She, as the mother and primary caretaker, not me, and if anything, she is the one neglecting her child. My sister cried harder, left my room, and hasn't talked to me since. For the peace of the family, my parents have been urging me to apologize to my sister for being harsh on my words and pushing blame to her. I can apologize if that is what they wanted, but I doubt she would forgive me. I think I was just stating the truth though. Am I the a-hole? Edit for clarity. I do have a job, study and pay, lower than market, rent and do chores too, just that I don't like human interaction in general. So when not required to be social, I prefer to be alone reading, listening to music, watching drama or gaming. I don't remember hearing my niece crying that day. It could be me, my headphones cancelling out her sound, or that when she wasn't crying anymore when I came out. It could also be me being completely oblivious. Can't deny that possibility. There are hundreds of messages on my phone every day, from advertisement to group chats and personal messages. While I do get notifications, I don't tend to check messages that frequently when I'm not working, so my sister's message got lost in there. Yes, I am apathetic, always had been, but I can be social when needed and get along with my peers. No, I am fine, so I don't need professional help. Just like how being gay isn't a mental issue that needs to be corrected. No offense, just a comparison. My niece is fine. Now for the top comments. Not the a-hole. She did not have confirmation from you that you would watch her child. Yep, that's the long and short of it. She wanted it to be true, so she ignored the lack of confirmation. Not the a-hole. Not the a-hole. As you said, it is her child. She should have made sure you agreed to it and not just send a text. I also don't get why she sent a text. You live in the same house. Why didn't she just ask you in person? Exactly. If Opie had agreed, then Opie would be the a-hole. But this is plain carelessness from the mother's side. Not the a-hole. Not the a-hole. Why didn't she give you that child in the morning? She just left the child alone in a room without knowledge that you were awake slash aware? That is extremely negligent. Exactly. Why did she just leave the child unattended without making sure you were going to watch her? I wouldn't let a two-year-old be unsupervised for five minutes. Now, for the next story. Am I the a-hole for taking my daughter with me on trips without her sister? I am a writer slash journalist with a private helicopter so I was able to continue traveling slash working during COVID. I have shared custody of my 16-year-old daughter. Due to all the lockdowns, I took her with me on some of the more exciting slash socially distant places that I was assigned to. I had permission. It was great for her since she was able to get out of the house occasionally. Her mom, my ex-wife, is married and has a stepdaughter that's 15. She had been staying at home through all of the lockdowns and was extremely jealous of my daughter for going on these trips. My ex asked me if I could consider bringing her stepdaughter along when I take my daughter out, but I declined. I don't want to be liable in case something happens, and frankly, I just don't care about her stepdaughter. I want to use these trips to bond with my daughter. Apparently, ex's home is getting difficult, with daughter and her stepsister constantly fighting due to the jealousy. My daughter asked if she could live with me full-time, 
and I'm more than happy to make that happen. But obviously, ex-wife isn't happy with that arrangement and begged me to just take her stepdaughter on one trip. I said no. Daughter doesn't want her to come either. My ex has been quite nasty to me lately, claiming I'm deliberately trying to keep my daughter from getting close with her stepfather slash stepsister. But she doesn't really seem all that close to them to begin with. She's been staying with me more and more and going on more of my trips, as her classes are all online and she really enjoys it. Am I the a-hole for not bringing her stepsister with us on these trips? Now for the top comments. Not the a-hole. It's completely unreasonable for your ex to ask you to assume responsibility for a child she chose to assume responsibility for by marriage. That is so far removed from being your problem. And that's setting aside things like safety and liability. Saying you're preventing the girls from bonding is pure manipulation. I have had step-siblings and our parents outside of the joint household were never relevant to our relationship in any way. Stick to your guns. Why in the world would it be your responsibility to take her stepdaughter anywhere? You are not a legal guardian. You have no ability to seek medical attention for her. You have no ties with her that would even allow her to travel with you. In short, she's a liability at best. The stepdaughter is their responsibility, not yours. You are most certainly not the a-hole for only taking your child, if for no other reason than for the legality of the whole thing. People take their kids' friends on trips all the time when the world is normal. I think you're overestimating the legal issues. Not the a-hole. Daughter doesn't want her to come either. That's all you need to know. I don't understand why stepdaughter would want to be on a trip where no one wants her to be. Now for the last story. Am I the a-hole for not wanting to meet my biological parents? I, 18 female, was put up for adoption when I was days old, and at the age of 5, I was adopted by a great couple. I have been with them ever since, and they are the best parents I could ever ask for. Recently, my caseworker, who is actually a good friend of my dad's, actually told them how my biological mother had somehow came in contact with her and had showed interest in meeting me. Now, my dad's, my elder brother and I had a talk about it and I decided that I didn't want to have any contact with her at present. And my caseworker conveyed a message, which my biological mom understood, and said that if I ever want to have contact with her, I can just ask my dad as she has given them her number. Now, my best friend actually went ahead and did some social media stalking and found my biological mom. She found that my mom would have been around 15 or 16 when she had me, and that was most likely the reason she gave me up, and I have two other half-siblings. I just simply told her that it still doesn't change my decision to not be in contact with her at present. Now she thinks I am an a-hole for not giving her at least one chance as she had to give me up involuntary due to the circumstances. Am I the a-hole for not giving my biological mother a chance? Now for the top comments. Not the a-hole. It is your choice only. Not this so-called friend or anyone else. Your friend should mind their own business and support you. The person they actually know. I agree. Except this so-called friend. Do you think that no friend should ever give you their opinion and just support you? Because to me, that sounds even worse. I know she didn't ask for opinion, but in such a big matter, it's better to consider it and decide on your own. Not the a-hole, but your friend certainly is. Adopted children meeting with their biological parents is a very personal decision. I know, I've done it. It also doesn't always end well. If you don't want to meet your biological mother, those around you need to respect your decision. You are young. There is plenty of time in the future to meet her if you change your mind someday. The mother of one of my best friends was adopted, and he says that her biological parents are kind of crazy and is not unhappy that he's only met them a few times. Not the a-hole. I mean, the biological mother seemed cool with your decision too. Which is decent. She gave you the option and a way to contact her in the future if you're interested. No one should force anyone into something they aren't ready for or don't want to do. And that's the end of this video, folks. As always, leave a comment and hit like and subscribe. And if you want more of this content, turn your notification on to get updated on the latest videos. And I'll catch you in the next one. Stay safe. Yeah.